You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here is your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. Well, happy Freestyle Friday. I am Glenda Geek from Ocala, Florida. And I'm Jamie Jennings, and I'm in Norman, Oklahoma. You're listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for Friday, March 1st, episode 3377, brought to you today by Kentucky Performance Products. Happy National Horse Protection Day, everybody. It's Friday, and another weekend of riding is a few short hours away. Jamie and Glenn are here to help you make it through the day with some fun guests and some really bad acts. Enjoy the show. That's right. We have a fun Friday planned for you today. We have Kyle joining us from Mareworthy, and he's going to tell us about the work they are doing to help retired thoroughbred mares live a fulfilling life. Plus, it's Freestyle Friday, and that means anything can happen, and also we'll be doing some really bad ads. Auditors, hang around for the post show. We're going to do one. We have no idea what we're going to talk about because it's Friday and we never do. Uh, but I got to tell you, well said. this whole t- Texas fire is incredible. Do you realize it's now the oh. second largest fire in U.S. history? It's heartbreaking, utterly heartbreaking. Uh, it's it's a million square acres, a million acres, um, and, you know, tons of homes. People have died. It's just terrible. There's, you know, there's videos of horses running loose down the roads, and uh, they say it's only 3% contained. It's five times the size of New York City. That means, and somebody showed a map here in Florida. It basically would be from Tampa on the Gulf Coast to Orlando in the middle of the state would be on fire the whole way across. Hmm. Uh, just half the state of Florida, if you if you looked at it that way. And Texas is so big, but still, and it's in the Oklahoma now, right? Yeah, so it's crossing into Oklahoma, and I do know that. I mean, we uh, it's been fire hazard warnings like crazy here because it's been so incredibly windy and dry. We did get a little rain yesterday here. I was just praying it was going to go over west, you know, of us, um, but it came up from the south. It's amazing how how intently you watch weather when you live in Oklahoma. I'm like that weather nerd now. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is heartbreaking. I did read that, you know, this is where most of the cattle production and beef production in the whole U.S. is, but most most of the cattle have been safe. Like the animals are getting out um, because people are fortunately with social media and with the easy way that we can contact people, you know, people are finding out about this with plenty of time to evacuate, but it they've evacuated many of the Western uh, cities in Oklahoma. I do know that. And they have been all week really. So, I mean, it's been, ripe for a fire and it's just it's awful huh. it's so weird how you know how we, weather in this country is so geographical we you know we've had so much rain this winter we've never had this much rain before and parts of texas even have had a, a bunch of rain but geez it's just so weird mm-hmm. uh anyway um and we always think about life in our own little bubble <clears throat> right so we always think that everybody else is going through the same thing we are in our own little bubble, because that's where we live. And that's true. You know, and then you see stuff like this, and it's just hard to believe. You know, it's just. I see to- my, my my European friends are like, "Oh my God, stop raining!" And we're like, "Please stop fire!" Yeah, <laughs> Please. I know. it's just crazy. All right, let's do some daily winnies. <laughs> All right, happy birthday to Leslie Knight, one of our terrific auditors, and it's her birthday, I think, this weekend, so happy birthday. We hope you have fun. Also, I wanted to give a big thank you to the almost 400 auditors that took part in this year's listener survey. Uh, We 
We uh, asked a total of 15 questions in the auditor room, and hundreds and hundreds of you answered each question each day and gave us also some really good insights in the comments. So this goes a long way for our advertisers to see those results and for, for the bosses to see them too. So thank you for participating. We really appreciate, you know, we wouldn't still be doing this job if it weren't for you guys uh, motivating us and keeping us going. So thank you so much. If you want to become an auditor, head on over to horsesinthemorning.com and click on the auditor banner in the middle of the page. Well, I, you know, I've had such an interesting horse here in training and I've talked about him. I posted on my, my business Facebook page, which is flyover farm, Jamie Jennings. Um, you can follow along with this story because this is an interesting case, Glenn. I don't know if you've seen it, but I had this horse come in who, um, had a lot of mental challenges. And when I say that, uh, I, I started him just like I normally do, got on him, rode him around, and he was like jumping at the bit, sticking his tongue out. Like, really, I, I picked up a trot and he like slammed on the brakes and like he's constantly looking at the horizon. And and I kind of realized that I get into the do the same thing, you know, and, and progress up the ladder. Well, some of these horses – it need something different. And this horse has needed something different. And it was a great reminder to me that you have to train the horse that you have and not do the things that you normally do. Um, if that makes sense. So this horse will not address that you're there. Okay. So like you are on the lead rope and he is no sky high or was sky high in the air surveying the horizon like left to the left squirrel to the right squirrel to the left squirrel up behind you what get constantly and the problem is he would spook on top of you like he had no regard to the fact that you were on the end of the line whatsoever and that is a very dangerous type of horse even though he's I, and i love dealing with scared horses this is one of my favorite spe specialties is dealing with a scared horse but i never had one that was scared and jumped on top of you and had no regard for the fact that there was a human anywhere near him. Um, and so I just kind of like, I was like, okay, we're not going to get on you anymore. We're just going to work on getting your attention and things have progressed really well. I'm really pleased with it. Again, you can go see all of this on Facebook, but I started just leading him around in the arena and then leading him around in the round pen. And then I took him out yesterday and led him around and just getting him to redirect. And I will tell you that I have done something very naughty for Monty Robert trainers because the, uh, to get him to look at me, he, he just to address the fact that I was there, I've started giving him little alfalfa pellets, which, you know, we don't treat train uh, with, with Monty's concepts, but this horse just needed an extra something to not hate humans. Because I realized like you can't touch his ears. You can't touch his right hip. Otherwise he just completely drops like, Oh my God, you're going to hit me. And I think what happened to this horse is because he is so inattentive, um, Either people made him run or they whacked him and as very or uh, grabbed his ear or both, <laughs> you know, the, and, and so there was a lot of things that were done to this horse to get him to pay attention to you, but none of them were working. And I, I feel so bad for him because he's, if you were to just be like, all right, man, we're just going to run until you figure out that I'm making you run. He would run until he died. Like he would, he would hurt himself. And that is one of the special unique qualities of thoroughbreds and other breeds is that you can't just run them to pieces in the round pen or in a lunge line or anything like that, because they will run until they hurt themselves. And you have to be the bigger person and go, okay, you're going to hurt yourself. What else can I do? And so I've had to kind of like come up with, it, it's, it's very Monty. Like I came down to the barn and farm boy was in the barn. I was like, all right. I couldn't sleep last night. This is what I decided <laughs> to do. <laughs> and it's definitely been a, a challenge. And I, I, I did finally get on him again and just kind of do the same thing, which is like turn, redirect, redirect, redirect. Uh, but he just, I think what has happened with him is he does not trust the human around him. So he's constantly looking. He doesn't trust that the human's going to keep him safe. Somebody has lied to this horse and 
he does not feel safe, which is why he's constantly surveying the surroundings. So I've just been leading a redirect. And it's so weird to have a training session where you're a rider and your job is to get on these horses and train them and work them and ride them and, and make them engaged in physical exercise. And with this horse, I just lead him around. It is so weird. But I must tell you that I am the the owner of this horse has been incredibly patient and totally understanding and like do whatever you need to do and has not said one word about the fact that I'm not riding the horse I'm just leading it around because she also knows that these are some of the qualities that are frustrating um so uh, we'll keep you posted hopefully I'll be able to get on him again today and ride him outside the round pen we'll see it's it's again like horse training I've done 150 racehorses, Glenn, and I've never had one like this. So it just goes to show you that you're never done learning people. Like you're never done. I mean, I have been like racking my brain on how to, and people are like, Oh, I had a horse like that. I'm like, what did you do? <laughs> how did you handle it? Because it's just so different. Hold on. I'm just making a note. Send Jamie a clicker. Oh God, <laughs> that's not going to happen, but I'm not coordinated enough to handle clickers. Okay. <laughs> or have treats in a little pouch. I'm already like ripping them out of my pocket. Like, here you go, buddy. Have it. And you know, what's weird is like they're alfalfa pellets, just like these tiny little alfalfa pellets. And he wouldn't even eat them out of my hand at first. And if he got aggressive and started being all mouthy or bitey or something, we'd come up with something else. But now he's Lowering his head and Sometimes he's looking you gotta at Sometimes you got to take steps. <laughs> you got to do yeah. steps. Little baby steps. It is. It is the uh, uh, farm boy sitting out there on the bench and he's like, well, your patience is on display with this horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he sit on the bench falling asleep. I'm like, listen, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> hey, I wanted to mention uh, before we get uh, to our first guest, there was some good news. Let's do some good news on a Friday. You know what the banker horses are? Have we ever had anybody on to talk about the banks or the horses on the outer banks of North Carolina? I don't the think banker so. Horses. They're, they're a really, really endangered uh, species. There are only about 300 of these horses in the world, which is uh, why there was really good news is that a new baby was born. Uh, in North Carolina, uh, they named the baby Eros, and uh, that brings the population on the island there uh, to 111. Why is that important? Because they say for genetic diversity, the minimum population is 110. So this makes number 111, which means we're coming closer uh, eventually to genetic diversity there. And he's very cute. There were pictures posted. If you want to look it up, just look up Banker Horse Baby and it'll come up. Uh, it's believed that they're descendants of the Spanish horses. There's some argument about how they got there. You know, ships wrecked and the horses swam to the island or something. It's probably oh, a, that's so black stallion. I know, it, um, but that you know, it's probably how they ended up there, or they were dropped there. You know, who knows? But uh, they've been there for a very long time, and uh, they do know they were from the Spanish horses and the galleons there. Uh, but they are small, and they have uh, coats that come in black and chestnut and other colors too. But that was good news. Do I thought they, I'd just give you a t- tiny bit of good news. Baby. Can I, can I, do you know more? Like, do you said there's a 300 in the world, but there's 111 yeah, on the island. So do know. they do a pony swim type thing? I, or? No, no. And, you know, we really need to get somebody on because I don't know that we've ever talked about them. So uh, I'll drop a note to Ashley and see if we can get somebody on to talk about the banker horses. Uh, but I do know they end up in the news a lot. You know, we hear about Chincoteague and Assateague all the time, but... Uh, there are, these horses are on an island too, but I don't think they have swims and stuff. I think they're just trying to keep them, make sure that they live. And of course, you know, hurricanes, Outer Banks happens a lot. So there are a lot of islands where horses um, survive. So yeah. it's it's really interesting that that yeah we haven't talked about these. I'll give you a couple other islands I want to hear about too. So we'll okay. we'll check that out. All right, sounds good. Well, we're going to hear from Kentucky Performance Products, and then we are going to Kyle with uh, a place called Mareworthy, which is in Georgetown, Kentucky. This Nutritional Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products. More and more horse owners are managing older horses. One of the best ways to care for the senior horse in your life is by prioritizing their digestive tract health. Older horses are less able to maintain a well-balanced microbiome and repair and replace damaged tissues. This can lead to an uptick in ulcers, colic, or free fecal water syndrome. 
poor gastrointestinal health decreases the horse's ability to digest and absorb adequate nutrients. It also impacts the effectiveness of the immune system, leaving older horses less able to fight off diseases such as EPM. Adding a research-proven digestive supplement to your older horse's diet can help maintain a healthy GI tract and reduce the incidence of digestive issues. We recommend ProbioticWise to our customers with senior and geriatric horses. ProbioticWise contains the true probiotic Saccharomyces boulardii. Unlike other yeast-based probiotics, S. boulardii remains viable through the acid environment in the stomach. It supports the healing of damaged tissues, reduced inflammation, and the optimal digestion and absorption of nutrients. Furthermore, ProbioticWise contains fermentation metabolites that support a well-balanced microbiome. ProbioticWise is sold through your veterinarian, so ask your vet if ProbioticWise is right for your older horse. You can learn more about ProbioticWise at kppvet.com. Got questions about your feeding program? We can help. Email Karen at questions at kppusa.com or call us at 859-873-2974. I would love to welcome to the show Kyle Rothfuss, and he is in Georgetown, Kentucky, and he is with Mareworthy.com, the actual creator and big brain behind Mareworthy. So first of all, hi, Kyle. Hi, Jamie. How are you doing today? Great. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us about Mareworthy and what inspired you to start it. Yeah, so Mareworthy, actually, the name came out of my 2019 Thurber Makeover Mare. Her name is Worthy of Wings. And we were just kind of coming up with some branding for T-shirts that year. And we went with uh, Mareworthy. But the concept really came from the fact of I've always seen a bigger challenge trying to rehome or sell older thoroughbred mares. So that tends to be, it's a little harder to find a home for them. And I thought, man, this mare had run 138 races. She was, she's tough. She's super, super willing. And I just thought, you know what? I think part of it is people just don't recognize what it takes to really be a mare person. It's a little bit different sometimes in the way you might communicate. So if you can get a mare to trust you, I just deem that as you are mare worthy. And then mare worthy turned... Yeah, Mareworthy turned into uh, our dream to have a 501c3 focused on supporting those thoroughbred mares, especially brood mares. But so we actually officially got our 501c3 status last March, and we've been rocking and rolling ever since. So, what is kind of the the mission of Mareworthy then? So our mission really is pretty simple. It's just to protect thoroughbred brood mares from suffering and cruelty. So we want to make sure we're figuring out ways upstream to keep them out of the kill pens um, and then helping provide owners who maybe are looking to retire their brood mares um, with resources and information about what to do for due diligence. If they're going to rehome a horse or hopefully give them an option if we have space at our sanctuary or through our adoption network. That does not seem like it'd be hard to find horses when you're in Georgetown, Kentucky. <laughs> it is not. We have had a, We've, and we're also, we've pulled several from kill pens over the last year. So we've actually, in our first year, we've taken in 23 horses in the first year. So it's definitely been a busy first year. Now, are most of these mares at your place or are they um, fostered out? So we haven't built a foster network yet. That's for a year two. We're working on that this year. So most of them have come through our place, although about, uh, what was it? Five or six of them have been direct placements, meaning we they went straight from either the kill pen to a previous owner, um, or they went directly from a, a person who contacted us and actually we found kind of just put them in touch with the right next home. Um, in the first year, we've adopted out six. So some of them have come to our farm and then been adopted out. And then we've done, uh, we have six of them in the sanctuary currently. And actually three of them are out in Oklahoma though right now. They just got all the kill pens. So yeah, most of them were were here they're coming through georgetown kentucky at some point and then going on but our goal really is to be able to do direct placement and also to build out a foster network this year now are these mares getting adopted out for as like riding homes or just pasture friends what are you thinking 
a combination of it. So, so far we've had one, we, we pulled a 23 year old mare from the kill pen in the late 2022. So she was kind of one of our first before we even were official. And she actually last year got adopted to a farm here in Versailles, Versailles, who is using her as a nanny for their babies. So she's actually, she's had 14 foals in her life. So she's actually the perfect nanny. So some of them are going on to be nannies. Some of them are actually going to riding homes. So I had one mare who was uh, 11. She got rehomed and went directly to a home where she's a little kid's riding horse now. And so it's kind of a little bit of a little bit of everything. We have a couple here at the farm that are eligible for the broodmare division at the makeover this year. So we are at the third makeover. So we are, you know, hoping to see them go. And we do have two that were adopted out already that will be competing in the makeover this year, um, as long as everything goes to plan for them this year. And are you going to compete any in the makeover this year? I am not. Unfortunately, I have a full-time job plus Merrily plus the farm, and we have four babies due this year. So this year was a little bit busy for me, but I still will be announcing at the makeover this year. Hey, speaking of which, congratulations on your your baby. I saw the picture. Thank you. Yeah. We had the newest one, and that was a little stowaway. We had two of the kill pen mares we pulled last year came to us, and we when we did their initial intake exams, we determined they were pregnant. So the first one had her full last Friday. So this is a week old today. I'll put it in a, sh- a picture of it in the show notes. I stole it off your Facebook page. So. <laughs> oh yeah, great. It's 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 a it's, she's a she's a cutie. We don't know who the sire is. We don't know. We think we're told it might be an Appaloosa cross, but she's a a regular Spitfire, super cute. And then we're expecting our first homebred baby for the year to be born. Um, hopefully in the next week or so. But our mare, who we bred, and was our first racehorse. So personally speaking. She uh, actually is having her first baby. So it's kind of exciting to have our first homebred, who was our first racehorse, is now having her first baby. And it was her winnings from her racing that actually helped be our seed money for Mayworthy. So um, it's kind of a full circle. That's fantastic. Congratulations on that. So how do people, if they want to look at adopting from you, where do they go? How do they qualify? Yeah, so the best thing to start with is to go to mayworthy.com. Um, we have a page there for adoption. We're working on getting the horses up there so that the mares are visible, but really it's just an inquiry form to get started. Um, we are initially looking at, we prefer to adopt out within 300 or so miles of, of the Lexington, Kentucky area, just so it's easier for us to do follow-up. But if someone goes to mareworthy.com and clicks adopt, there's a page with a, uh, there's a little infographic with a, what to go through. And there's an inquiry form at the bottom that can just get it started. Give some basic information, like, you know, how would you describe your ideal horse? And then we, be, we do a lot of it conversationally. I prefer to have a chat and talk and make sure we get you matched with the right mare that we have. Kyle, That's awesome. Uh, before, I did, yeah, go, go ahead, ahead, Jamie. I was just, before you go, I, I have a question for him. I was yeah, going to direct you to that right now, Glenn, <laughs> because you have struck a chord in Glenn's heart. I'm an Oma's America's horse husband. Did I hear that your personal barn is called Horse Husband Stables? It is, yes. Yeah. So we uh, we did that last year specifically because there's you know confusion when you're in the racing world and you're in the aftercare world. One of my big goals with Mayworthy is to kind of, I'm towing the line between two worlds, and I want to make sure that, you know, I'm those are two worlds that don't talk to each other very well sometimes. So being in both worlds, I was like, well, I I also have to be careful that my personal name isn't showing up on a bunch of racing cards and things like that. It'll make people confused for Mayworthy that Mayworthy is, you know, running horses, which we're not. And so we said we need to set up an LLC for the organization. So my husband and I actually decided that the best name we could come up with when we sat down was Horse Husband Stables. So our personal horses are all under Horse Husband Stables, and that's what we'll race under as well. All right. Um, so we thought I kind of just spoke to people like you and, <laughs> and I, so for us I as have well. to ask because uh, is was is his, your husband's name Sean, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So was Sean a horse guy or did you drag him into this? Not at all. He got dragged into it. Yeah. Does, <laughs> How's that going, yeah, by the way? He does stall seven days a week now. So oh, we have God. I need to talk to right him. And, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's, uh, he's a saint. Um, he came into this being afraid of horses and now. Uh, you know, he's in there in the stalls, picking stalls with them while they're in there and leading and helping with everything. He was actually the one to hold the baby for her veterinary, her first veterinary exam on Saturday morning. So he's definitely come a long way, but definitely got dragged into this. <laughs> you tell him that if he goes too much further, he's actually going to be a horse guy. 
Yeah, everyone. We've had a few people say he's not allowed to call himself, a, you know, a novice or a horse husband anymore. And I was like, no, he still is. Trust yeah. me, he, there's a lot to learn. Hey, I've been doing well, this for 30 years. I'm still a horse husband. I'm I'm not giving up yep. that moniker because <laughs> you know if you give it up, then there's responsibility involved. Uh, Correct. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can't point the finger later. Right, and Sean's no, smart I, not to what? take accept the responsibility. <laughs> Question about right. him with being around horses. My husband also was drug into this. And there, the one thing my husband will not do, he will clean a stall. He he doesn't really like to touch the horses. Um, but okay. you, he would rather die than put a blanket on a horse. He's like, <laughs> I don't understand why you reach under them and move these things between their back legs. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen ever. So does he have something like that? that he's like, this, this is the stupidest thing ever. Um, he definitely will not like I'm, I'm practicing milking the, so the, the maiden mares we have that need to be, you know, they're going to have their first babies. That's one thing I know he's not going to get his hand up under there. Um, and oh, hell no. Messing with them. <laughs> <laughs> but he will blanket. He'll do that. Um, and there's a few other, you know, other pieces. Where, sheath like, cleaning. Never, pull. ever. Sheath cleaning. Yeah. Never. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't sign up for that one. That's why I don't want colts or geldings on my farm. There's no sheath cleaning here. <laughs> <laughs> avoid that one. There's just utter scratches for everybody, Glenn. That's it. <laughs> utter scratches for everybody. Yep. All right. Fantastic. Well, it's mareworthy.com. Everybody can go check out your beautiful farm, your beautiful family. And uh, congratulations on getting your nonprofit status. And I think you're doing great things. Thank you so much. Thank so, you, Kyle. So glad to be on the show. All right. Take care. Hey, say hi to Sean for me. All right. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> Send right. your wishes. <laughs> Bye. Well, there you go. Uh, Sean Scott smart. He's smart. See, you, you can only go to a certain point because once you admit, and you know, I've had how many listeners over the years say, you're not a horse husband, you're a horse guy. But once I admit to that, then there's a certain level of responsibility I have to take and I'm not willing to take it. So, there. <laughs> <laughs> and so any, so any horse husband listening, do not cross the line because then you're expected of things are expected of you that you don't want to do. The novelty's gone. Yeah. You're like a part of it now. Yeah. I mean, like I said, my husband would rather die than blanket a horse. He thinks that is the worst possible. Every time I do it, he's like, I can't believe you're just standing back there <laughs> moving things. And you're usually I'm like, blanketing because it's cold. It's miserable. You know, the weather yeah. sucks. <laughs> it's fun to have somebody sit there and berate you for doing what you're doing while you're doing it because it needs to be done. And you know what? Pick up a blanket. But we no, had the blanket would. once this year. I know everybody hates me now, but, uh, you know, I don't miss it. And I, I will put them on. I do will put them on and take them off. But I understand, especially after they're on. What I hate even more than putting them on is when they roll in the mud after they're on. And then you have to take them off. It's like, oh, this is just gross. It's just great. Yeah, you have gone soft. You, you used to live in Pennsylvania. Yes, we had, you yeah. have no reason to complain. <laughs> we had a lot of mud there, but not here. Thank God. Anyway, I did do something really yeah. smart in my barn for blanket design. So each stall, I have like the blanket bar, which some horses like to reach on and eat the blankets off the blanket bar. And they so I've moved those to the side. I mean, it's been like a constant figuring out where the blankets go. But when they're wet, I came up with putting these, maybe everybody did this, but I never worked in a bar and had this. You always like drape your blanket over a fence to yeah, get dry fence, or yep. whatever. No, I put giant hooks and I have a step ladder and I go up and I, I hook the chest clips on the front and I have these like hook things at the very top of the barn. And so the blanket hangs all day, the all the way down from the very top of the stall. And it it's awesome. Doesn't I don't know freak why. Freak out when you go in occasionally, and it looks like large creatures up there. Glenn, I'm scared every day, all the time. <laughs> so it's really the Just... least of my worries. <laughs> The blanket monsters aren't out to get you. No Lord. What's really awesome is when the wind blows them and then there's blanket monsters that are moving through your barn aisle. But like I said, least of my worries at this point. <laughs> it's a good idea to hang them up high, get them out of the way and let them dry. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I love it. And, I, and the horses can't get to them, which is nice. Um, but well, it is definitely... Yeah, I and I'm like, you know, the five two and so I have I just have a step ladder in my barn. It just lives there. 
Huh. Where do you want to put this? Right there. Leave it right there because I use it all the time. All right. There's Jamie's <laughs> helpful tip of the day. We'll bill you all later. Uh, so for that. One. If anybody wants a picture of my hooks, they're pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with them. So. <laughs> there Let you me go. Know. <laughs> well, we're going to hear from a few of our sponsors and then come back with Friday's Really Bad Ads. You can enjoy your favorite equine videos all in one place with Ride TV, the ultimate equine streaming platform. The newly relaunched Ride TV has all the series you love, like Rockstar Vets and Mini Horses, plus top-tier training videos and event footage from BarrelRacing.com and Horse and Rider On Demand. Whether you're ready to relax with your favorite series, binge watch competition footage, or train with a world champion, subscribe to Ride TV today for only $19.99 to see where your ride takes you. Visit RideTVGo.tv to subscribe. For first-time horse owners and new riders, finding the information and support you need can be challenging. That's why Equine Network has partnered with Sentinel and Absorbing to bring you My New Horse. From important horse keeping information and how-to videos to social media communities, exclusive experiences, and more, My New Horse is your one-stop shop for riders of all levels and disciplines looking for easy-to-understand horse care information and guidance. Start your horse ownership journey today. Visit MyNewHorse.com. If you ain't met one by now, you're bound to sooner or later. He says one thing and he means another, but... He can't help it. He's a horse trader. Horse trading. Well, it's a laissez faire. Let the buyer beware. Horse trading. They tell a low down lie with a sincere stare. Horse trading. Well, if they're talking in circles and the deal ain't square, he's a master in the fine art of persuading. Horse trading. That's right. It is that time of the week when we do really bad ads. Listeners submit ads from Craigslist, Facebook, someplace like that. And we just have a little bit of fun with them. We give away prizes every month. And I do have the new prizes. So anybody that was in in the last month that we didn't have prizes for, sorry about that, you will be included in the drawing at the end of this month. So our prizes for March are a year supply of Spalding Fly Predators. We just had a guest on, a terrific guest that talked about these. Spalding Fly Predators are the natural solution to your fly problem. Basically, you take these little predators and you sprinkle them on manure piles and compost areas or corners of the barn, things like that, and they'll seek out the little fly larvae and babies and put an end to the next generation so, of flies. It's I was like trying to explain massacre. it to my mother-in-law. and <laughs> I was like, okay, so the flies lay an egg, and then these predators go into the fly eggs and like suck out the guts of the baby <laughs> right. flies. in it's the basically a massacre. Like, <laughs> she was like, do they go in your brain? And I was like, oh, God, I oh, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Give you something else to worry I about. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, I the least of my worries. I haven't heard any spalding fly brain stories so i I assume not (laughs) so anyway you're going to get a year supply up to 250 fifty dollar value of that uh, spalding fly predators.com also uh we're giving away an annual subscription to the u.s rider if you drive a car if you have a trailer uh then u.s rider is the place to go uh they are a nationwide plan that covers everything from lockouts to jump starts to towing your vehicles trucks and trailers you're covered whether you're towing or not so even when you're driving your car uh you don't even have to have the trailer you can use this uh uh, U.S. Rider Service. You know, I did hear, it's interesting, U.S. Rider's been around for a long time before Equine Network bought them, and they had kind of not a great reputation. When Equine Network bought them a few years ago, they changed everything. So uh, they they made a larger uh, network of dealers and shops and things, tow companies that they work with. They also took the call center from overseas and brought it in-house in the United States. So it's a much better service than it used to be uh, years ago. So if you were trying it years ago and didn't like it, it's worth giving it a try again. Uh, I will have- tell you that one of the things, you know, you're like, well, I have AAA. It's fine. No, no, no. AAA will leave your trailer on the side, side of the, of the road. road. Yep. That has happened to me. I mean, they try. I was like, just leave. I'll yep. figure it out. Um, but yeah, they, 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 nobody takes the trailer. Nobody helps you with your horses, but 
U.S. Rider does. I'm so happy to have be subscribed to them. Well, and uh, one of our lucky listeners will also get a subscription. So this uh, this week, Taylor sent in the first one. <laughs> Just look at the picture, Jamie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I want this one. First of all, that's the worst picture of the I cutest know, thing ever. I know. I love the hair. We'll describe the picture after the ad. Hello. Would love for Jeff to have a home with little kids. He loves kids and loves attention. He rides and drives. He loads, leads, and all of that. Good for the farrier. UPD. Dentaled last fall. Dentaled. Is that actually a word? Dentaled? No. Oh. Den- it was, he was dental-led. <laughs> he was dental-led <laughs> last fall. He's honest and doesn't lie. Matter of fact kind of guy. Jeff is a pony mule. I had to ask Jennifer if that was actually a thing, and apparently it's true. Mama was a pony. Daddy was a donkey. That makes him a pony mule, apparently. He is not a mini. In Randolph County, West Virginia, PM for details, he could carry an 80-pound child comfortably or pull a cart. He doesn't like bullies. Well, who does, really, when you think about it? I didn't like bullies on the uh, late bus at school, either. Um, Jeff is gelded long time ago. Now, there's one line. This is a good ad. And by the way, Jeff is absolutely adorable. <laughs> he's this little he's this little uh, pony mule, and his hair is sticking straight up like Guy Fieri's. I, I don't know how they got his hair to do that. It I, looks like with his forelock, he's just facing the wind. I just <laughs> standing so in the wind. Cute. Like, I want that. I told Jennifer I want this one. So somebody adopt Jeff. He's actually really, really cute. If you look oh my god, he's adorable. <laughs> and and he's the picture. By the way, the angle of the picture is right at the front of him with the wind blowing his hair straight, but like he stuck his finger in a light socket, <laughs> and he's standing downhill. And so his butt is like way up in the back, and then he's like, oh, it's his just belly sticks blessing. out. He's as wide as he is tall. <laughs> it's yeah. Funny. Oh, man. Um, the next one comes in from Laureen. I guess you didn't have time yeah, to read hey, it yourself. Laureen, this is the second week in a row you haven't read your own ad. Slacker. <laughs> uh, package deal. Barrel horse, $13,500 oh. in Sumrall. Where's Sumrall? Oh, I'm assuming well. yeah. it's somewhere country. Oh, Lord. Yeah, it's got to be country. In need of a car, so I'm offering up my barrel horse. He come with all his tech. Meet Thunder. He's a bay town, about 15 years old and 15-1 to 15-3 HH. I don't have any videos of him running the pattern, but I do have multiple videos of him loping the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going fast, but going. <laughs> Due to his big motor, I would not consider him beginner safe. He's been there and done that and extremely good at his job. He required, by the way, there's zero punctuation. <laughs> uh, he's been there and done that and extremely good at his job. He requires very little maintenance, which I will discuss with anyone interested in him. He's my absolute heart horse and I hate to offer him up, but I have no other option. Unfortunately, I made up my mind to keep him, but I really need a car more than a horse right now. <sighs> you do get places faster, I will say. Not with him because thunder's fast. Okay, <laughs> uh, I always walk right... Oh, no, I skipped some. He loves to run and loads like... A dream. He's the easiest horse to catch. He's never ran away from me. I always walk right up to him and put his halter on and lead him out. He'd be the perfect high school rodeo horse or possibly even college rodeo. The tack included with him is a 15-inch barrel saddle. It has a blue gator seat, blue saddle pad, a glitter gator tack set, a full set of professional choice pink glitter boots, and some <laughs> other bell boots. Lots of glitter. Lots a of brand glitter. new pair of Rockstar Reigns PM me for price and more info. Please, price negotiable. Please, dear God, somebody take this glitter barrel horse and <laughs> go home with it. This guy or girl I, really needs a car. And, you know, for 13500 might be able to buy one. I really think that that's probably a good decision. Yeah, I do, too. I do. I mean, too. it sucks, but you know what? Got to have a car. But I would like to see a video of him more than loping around the pattern, especially seeing that he is a, you know, he, he's really big motor. College rodeo, that's pretty tough. Heather sent this one in. Say hello to Brownie. Brownie. Hi, Brownie. <laughs> Brownie is a four-year-old mare quarter horse. Oh, this is what your this is what Farm Boy was looking for. 
She is gentle as they come. She loves pets and working. She is great trail ride horse with a great work ethic. Ethic. She is hard working horse. Make sure that you are safe. Brownie uh-huh. bathes, loads, and ties without an issue. She loves to play in water and has sweet traits. Not treats, traits. With Brownie as your horse, you will never have a dull moment. Brownie is looking for a forever home with someone who will be out to work to be out her. Wait a minute. With it's someone so who will out her to work or to go for a nice ride on a good day. Brownie is probably the nicest, friendliest, and most lovable horse. Do you remember when we talked to Deanne on Monday about the terms and the things you should look for in ads? Yeah. There's one sentence in here, all this lovely things about Brownie and how perfect Brownie is. And then there's this one sentence that sang off a little alarm in my head. Okay, what is it? With Brownie as your horse, you will never have a dull moment. Oh, hell, hold on. <laughs> all these wonderful things. And then that one sentence says it all. <laughs> Something about great. Brownie we're not hearing about in this ad. Very astute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hey, by the way, do you remember a couple of weeks ago we had an ad and it was from Australia, one of our Australian listeners, and she followed up with an email because you read her ad wrong. They were trying to sell the horse. Otherwise, you know, sell her with or has points. And we, it was yeah. PTS, which actually meant put to sleep. So, like, get oh. the horse or we're going to shoot it. Okay. Well, Y'all. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> no, I know. I was like, oh, that is, that's a lot darker than that, yeah, uh, we that changes the ad altogether. <laughs> oh, somebody go get that horse. Uh, Hannah sent the next one in. Oh, wow. Uh, Red Mare is a aged mare used to be competitive trail. Horse buckskin mare is reg tro. Overo, paint more pictures or video. Okay. So uh, th- there's a picture of a, like, I mean, these, these horses look homeless. <laughs> They're like standing in dirt lots, looking very forlorn. And the, the Overo, the Tro Overo, uh, has a foal on the ground, we but I don't know that. which, which <laughs> horse is for. Yeah, this is it. There's, there's, what? A, there's a reddish brownish horse, which I don't know what color exactly that is. I don't know. It may be the buckskin. No, that's not I the don't, buckskin. You know I don't what? get it. How about this is a really bad ad and we leave it at yeah, that? Yeah, okay, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, it really was a bad ad. And when they start getting into the Western terminology, I get lost anyway. The tro overos and all of that stuff. That's not a thing. Oh, tro oh. <laughs> Sometimes we Overo say it's not a thing, and then we get emails saying, oh, yeah, it is. Cynthia. Well, if you know what a tro, T-R-O, overo paint is, then Let us I know. Correct it. Yeah. Cynthia sent this one in. Oh, my God. It's a 1959 oh. horse trailer, our horse trailer of the week. What the hell oh, is in wow. the back of that thing? Uh, 1959. Oh, my God. It's like new, Glenn. It's a 70 year old horse trailer. <laughs> it's $2,000. What? Oh, well, it's got a paint job to rival Donald job. Trump's, you know. It, look, it actually looks like a Centaurant with Donald Trump. Is a good, usable horse trailer. Permanent plates have title in hand. That's a very old title. So, yes, this horse trailer is your typical little tiny, tiny round fronted horse trailer. It has four working tires by the pictures. I mean, it really does. It looks it's on in pavement. Be- it looks in better shape than the 1990s trailers we see. But it does have a paint job. It's painted red, white, and blue with stars. It looks like the flag. It looks like the flag has been painted onto the horse trailer. And the other thing I can't quite figure out is it is full of stuff. I mean, all the way up to the top. I, yeah. don't, I can't tell what the stuff is, but it's. does it come with the stuff? For $2,000, I would hope so. All I know is get a tetanus shot. <laughs> and I think that back maybe would. So you may have to look into that as well. But yeah, so the roof is painted blue with white stars all over. The back, the like ramp is painted Blue with white stars, and the middle of the trailer is white, and the whole bottom is used well, to be used red. To be red. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of faded now. It's kind of like a splotchy pink, but you get the idea. So, I still yeah. think two thousands probably, unless there's something good hiding in the bottom of that horse trailer. It comes with um, 
It comes with the horse, the red mare, and oh, the tro yeah. omero. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't fit them in there, but you know they can tag along behind. It's fine. Casey sent the next one in. It's short and sweet. Must sell. Uh, there's no title, no nothing. Must sell as I have no time all of my horses. Good horse looking for new home. Two-year-old horse located in Plainfield, Plainfield, Illinois. Please PM me if any questions. Series inquiries only 2500 OBO. Thanks. I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have questions. Do we know what? It doesn't really say what make and model it is, does it? Oh, this next one, bless his heart. Somebody go get this one. It, you know, these horses today are just making us all, we have themes every week. This theme is, geez, just somebody take this horse. Please somebody help it. Faye sent this one in. Oh, this is short too. Uh, <laughs> looking to trade for something a little young, very broke, anybody can ride him. And Jamie, what is missing? There's four pictures of this horse. What is missing in all four pictures? Well, it needs about 300 pounds. Let's start with well, that. Okay. But also, it is a picture of the horse from the front, like 45 degree angle to the front. And there's no photos of its head, <laughs> just the <laughs> shoulder and the brow. And there's four <laughs> pictures and they're all not showing the horse's head. What like else do you see in the off. foreground that drives me nuts? And I know people do it, but it drives me nuts. One of my pet peeves. Barbed wire. Barbed bar. wire. Yeah. Right in front of the horse. I just. Uh... So it's behind a barbed wire. Somebody go get this horse. Now, this next one. Is, it's 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 crazy because Monica submitted it and Monica lives in Vermont. And this ad is in my Craigslist every time I go to check. Oh, really? And it is a, yes. A, so I don't know what kind of scam this whole it, thing is. It's a scam. Uh, wanted free TB or appendix quarter horse, $1. And they have a picture of an absolutely stunning black stallion on the front and and the ad is wanted free thoroughbred or appendix qh three to six years old off track okay no old injuries if you have one that didn't make it on the track or one you want off your feed bill let me know again i see that in my oklahoma one all the time and i was wondering i was like that's so weird i wonder if anybody's ever called well uh if you are going to do a search for this ad you just have to put in a hashtag and I don't think that I can go through all of them, but no, I'll, no, you cannot. It would take us I'll a do, week. Let me let me do some. The hashtags include horse thoroughbred, TV, TB, eventer, sport horse, horse show, horse breaking, horse starting, pony hunter, pony horse, boarding pasture, hay, horse feed, shoer, farrier, buckskin, endurance, hunter jumper, Welsh POA, kids horse, horse pasture, horse horse boarding, corral, racing, breeder, track. Breeding, fencing, papers, re registered track, racehorse, youth horse program, English saddle, English bride, riding helmet, English check, bridle, roan, palomino, horse, black stallion, gelding, mare, tractor, winter horse blanket, western saddle, Shetland pony, feed, horse, buckets, fencing, horseshoer, farrier, horse hauling, bay, paint, grazing, pinto, livestock, mowing, farm. If it, I covered one sixteenth of the hashtags that are included in this. My brain hurts. You know what they did? They put this into AI and they said, I want every term involving a horse. And this is what it came up with. It even has goats, fencing, shelter, <laughs> barn, ag exemption. Ag exemption. What is ag exemption? <laughs> Why would you? Oldenburg, warm blood, Western ISO wanted. Pipe corral is one of the hashtags. Why would you have pipe corral as a hashtag? <laughs> Eggs, chickens, fencing, running, farm, horse, trail, sport horse, breeding, breeder, wheeling, colt, acres, land, mower, lawnmower. <laughs> In the post show today, I want to read you something that got through the spam filter into my inbox. And it was an email. And uh, it's let's just call it really bad spam. We need a new se segment called really bad spam emails. Because, oh, I love that. Uh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll do that in the post show. I got I got one of those for you, too. But we're going to end today's really bad ads with Scott. Scott hasn't sent us one in a while. So here's Scott. Hey, this is Scott from Virginia. This bad ad comes from Craigslist in Richmond, Virginia. The subject reads, Colt, stud, stallion, horse, reigning, ranch, cattle, quarter horse, dash, $6,000, Cumberland. Then you've got about 15 or 20 photos of this young man. And the ad reads, 
five-month-old weanling ready for his new home, comma, he is an own son of Big Blonde Gun, who is still competing and reigning to make a name for himself, just like a sire, Big Checks to Cash, whom is a million-dollar sire, parentheses, reigning, new line. This chestnut weanling, barn name is Checks, and his dam is an own daughter of Electric Code with earnings of over 215000 in reigning, comma, new line. If you are looking for your next reigning prospect, don't miss out on this little fellow. He has got the confirmation, brains, and a pedigree full of champions, top and bottom, comma. For more information, feel free to text me anytime. Oh, that was it. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for a comment. I was I mean... too. I love those names. Oh. Though. <laughs> Big blonde is something names. I can't remember. <laughs> So I just went to my local Craigslist and the uh, I went to the farming garden section and the first thing is that wanted free TB or appendix quarter horse. Scammer, right scammer, scammer. What alert. is this? There's How been, about you know, if you have a free sound three to six year old thoroughbred, I'll take it. There's, <laughs> there's two things that have been going around on all local Facebook pages that are scams too. Do you know what they are? If you're, you know, like the, the Ocala local Facebook page. Um, and do you know what they are? And they're, this yeah. is all over the country now. Duct cleaning surfaces and people who will detail your cars. And what they're doing is they're saying, well, before I come out, I need to deposit. And they're, they're, there's all kinds of warnings now. Even the government is warning about duct cleaning services and detail car detailing. Really? Yep. And they're, I see them all the time on the local town's Facebook pages around here. And then you look them up and, you know, all, they don't have any friends and they just joined Facebook, you know, six months ago. You know what? It's so I'm glad you said that because there's um, a married couple that they're – Car cleaning business is going under. They've fallen on hard times. That's it. It's really... the same one. It's oh the same God, ad that, that we I see. Like, oh, I need to help these people. That's like maybe same, I get them out to detail. That's the same ad. Exactly no. the same ad. And this, if you, the reason that I picked up on it one was I saw the news article, but then I started looking at the pictures that are posted on all the these different Facebook pages, and they're all the same pictures, different name of person posting them. I almost fell for that. Although when they told me I had to pay a deposit, I would have. Yep. Send them packing. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. By the way, just keep in mind, people, if you need to ship your horse across the country, do not pay a deposit. Do not. That's a scam. Do not. They will steal your deposit and never call you again. Or they'll pick up your horse and they won't deliver it. So please do not pay deposits for any of that stuff. The reputable companies will put you on the schedule, come get you, and you pay when they pick up your horse. There you go. I almost fell for that, Glenn. Oh, well, I'm glad I brought oh. it up today. <laughs> I know. I was like, I have this new car, and I'm like, I'll trash it soon enough. Now, I'll give them some what business. I, what I did is I did, because we did have, uh, I got the truck, our truck, our GMC 2013. We haven't done a real great job of cleaning it over the years. Uh, so I had the professional detailer did come out. I found him on Facebook, but then I went onto Google and read all the reviews and double checked that they were actually legitimate. Then I called him on the phone and talked to an actual person, and he came out and he was the most terrific. Two people took five hours to clean that truck. And let me tell you what, we could have sold it the next day showroom. I mean, it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it was so cool. Was it $900? No, like... it, was, it was $300 for a truck. Uh, car would have been two twenty five, I think. But we had him do. You know how the headlights get that little etching on them, and you can't see yeah. them eventually. Well, he even cleaned that and got did a good job with that. But there, so there are legitimate ones. Just read the Google reviews. Uh, but yes, the husband and wife duct cleaning and de car detailing. No, that's a scam. Wow, I never would have known. Yep. Never would have known. That's and apparently crazy. this uh, person that emailed me about this, my social security uh, being revoked uh, will find out about that in the post show. Oh, boy. <laughs> Coming up after this. Also, the other one, while, while we're warning people, I came across this one because I, be, I got at least 20 calls about this this week. What they're doing is the scammers are calling saying, and I think they're just shooting in the dark. They're calling and saying, your loan application uh, is going to be rejected. On, and they use legitimate names of banks. So they use legitimate mortgage lenders and names of banks, probably a bank you have an account with. And then you start to think, well, I didn't apply for a loan. Is somebody applying for a loan in my name? Because they're using your bank name. So uh, 
I did some research on that, and that is one of the latest scams going around. Is then they get they say we need more information, they get your information, and that's what they're going after. But it's all uh, a scam. you know, what? click no links. You know, I always think I'm like, if somebody wants me, they'll call me. I do get the Norton antivirus, like you're you've just been re upped for yeah. eight hundred twenty six dollars. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. sure. <laughs> yep. Anyway, that's the newest one. Is legitimate banks are being used and targeted. Uh, for these scams. There you go. Fun times we live in. On that note, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. <laughs> and we'll oh, see, man. We'll Don't see, pay deposits. We'll see you all in the post show. Hey, neuter gal. Hey, we're heading to Aiken. We'll talk to you from Aiken on Monday.